I'd like to point out to you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, when I speak here today, and although I'm a member of the Board of Governors of NICAP, I am not speaking for them in any sense of the word. I'm speaking for myself, and for only for myself. The opinions are mine. The information that I've given you, the uh, statements that I've made, are based uh, to a large extent on uh, documents in the possession of NICAP to which I have access. And, uh, but I just didn't want any misinterpretation of what I have said or am about to say. F-22 and a 200. And uh, they, uh, did you pull the slide? Good. Had a guy, took my picture one time, didn't pull the slide. I had to go back later and pose again, you know, after it was all over. I missed the plane. Now, we're confronted with something which NICAP is trying to break up and to overturn, and that is the policy of censorship by the military, which, among other things, are, it reaches into many, many lines of endeavor, but it is directed, or has been, the aspect of it that we're fighting, of keeping the public from knowing what's going on in the field of these unidentified flying objects. Now, this stemmed from the fact that they swarmed over Washington in July and August of 1952. They, and it also stems from the fact that we have not been able to cope with these things, and somewhere, somebody up in the upper levels of our military decided that rather than tell the public that there's something up there they can't cope with, we'll tell the public that there's nothing up there while all the time we are working and trying to find out some means to counteract them, as you have seen from one of those that UFOs are serious business document. They take, uh, they regard it seriously. They're trying to combat them. Let me point out an example of how this censorship and suppression works. On the night of April 18, 1962, a glowing red object appeared over New York State, over Oneida, New York. It was seen by uh, a ground watchers group there. They reported it to the air, nearest air base. They got it on radar. They began tracking it. It was at very high altitude at that time, somewhere between 75 and 100 miles. It was moving southwestward and rather slowly. It was tracked all the way across the middle part of the country to Gridley, Kansas, where it changed course, went up over uh, uh, Nebraska and Wyoming and part of Colorado. And then it, or a similar object, landed beside a power station at Eureka, Nevada. Power station went out of business, coincidence probably. But while this thing was on the ground there by the power station, the power station was out of operation. It was out of operation for about 42 minutes, according to the Air Defense Command. That gave the Air Defense Command, which was in quite a flap as a result of this thing, it gave them time to get up a flight of armed jet interceptors from the base at Phoenix and another from Steadfield at Reno. They were vectored in on this thing, which had, in the meantime, taken off from near the power station. The power station came back into operation. The object took off uh, after the, uh, uh, the object took off, and then the power station came back into business. Then the jets were vectored in on this object. It was then uh, totally dark. They were chasing it westward across Nevada when the thing exploded in flight about 70 miles south of Reno and the flash was so brilliant that it was seen over five states. Scientists out there who saw the flash said this appeared to be an atomic explosion. Neither the Strategic Air Command nor the Air Defense Command nor the Air Force would say whether they had shot at this thing. They would only say that the jets were being vectored in on it when it exploded. Uh, maybe it just lost its temper and blew its top, but for some reason it blew up out there over the desert, which was a very good place to do it. Now, this is an important news story. It's a big news story. When an unidentified object crosses the United States at a level at which we can't intercept it and then comes down beside a power station, the power station goes out of business, armed jets are sent after the thing, they're chasing it when it blows up. This is a big news story. The Air Force and the Air Defense Command both said this could not have been a meteor because it was tracked on radar and because of the fact that it landed and took off again. They said we don't know what it was came out on one newswire in four lines of copy. It said an unidentified flying object believed to have been a meteorite flashed over the uh, state of Nevada and other, sent other uh, Great Plains states last night and exploded over the desert south of Reno. 
That's the kind of news that you got out of the newswire on this. Now, the newswire either didn't check the story or for some reason they decided that they would not carry it. My feeling is that they have a deal with the Air Force not to carry it, that they have a deal with the entire Defense Department. Because if you want this story, incidentally, it's on April the 19th, 1962, Las Vegas Sun, which carried an eight-column banner head and the full story with all the details I've given you, plus a few others. Now, when I say that there is censorship on this thing, I don't think it originates with the Air Force, I, because it covers all of our military services, every one of them. Therefore, this has to be an order from the very top in the Defense Department. Now, how could any organization, how could any agency of the government decide what is going to be carried on the news and what is not going to be. This is called managed news. It's not all managed by the government. You can see there an example of where one of the news wires did a little news managing on their own. They refused to carry the story. So the newspapers didn't have a chance in that particular case. Now, if these things didn't exist, there would be no necessity for the censorship. But the regulations are on the books, JANEP 146B, AFR 200-2, and others. There are the censorship regulations on the book forbidding government personnel, military and otherwise, to make any public statements on this subject. There, there is evidence right there that the things do exist. But the censorship restrictions are there. Now, if the things do exist, as the censorship regulations indicate, and there is censorship, then it must be because somebody has decided that these things present a problem to us and that for some reason or other the American public is not entitled or not fit to know what the problem is. Now we come down to one of the basic principles of Americanism and this is the thing that I am fighting and fighting hard against and it's simply this. There is nothing in the Constitution and there is nothing in any amendment to the Constitution that gives any agency of the United States government the right to withhold public information from the American people. And yet some agency in the military has taken it upon itself to issue the censorship, uh, to issue the censorship regulations which say quite plainly that they, regardless of what they find, they must tell the American public something else. This is fraud and lying and it is illegal and it's unconstitutional. Now, the issue before us is this. How much longer will the American people sit back and take this? They are paying the salaries of everybody in that Defense Department where this order originated. The question I ask you is this, and it's a question for you to ask yourself and to ask your congressman. You're paying the salary of those men over there. Are they working for you? Or are you taking orders from them? At the present time, ladies and gentlemen, you're taking orders from them. There isn't a man in Congress, to my knowledge, who dares to get up today and challenge the Defense Department because this phony space program, this $50 billion worth of fireworks that we've bought, is spread around in every congressional district in the United States so that every congressman has hundreds and maybe thousands of constituents who are on some space payroll. The minute he gets up and challenges the Defense Department, he's going to hear from the folks at home. He's going to hear from the factory owners, and he's going to hear from the Chambers of Commerce and the other people who are interested in seeing that he doesn't do anything to upset those space contracts. We've got to find out how deep that dust is on the moon. Now, this has given the Defense Department a stranglehold on this nation. President Eisenhower realized this in the closing days of his administration, and he said in his farewell message that he didn't know how, how long this could continue, this state of affairs where the military was spending more than half of the national budget. And he didn't know uh, whether the American people could live with this or not. Now you notice that President Johnson is cutting down military uh, deals here and there and everywhere and space deals and he's meeting tremendous opposition in Congress and in the Defense Department. 
He's meeting it in Congress because the Defense Department is buttonholing Congress and, and burning the congressmen and needling them through the boys back home who stand to profit by this thing. What you have done today and what Johnson is trying to do and what Eisenhower warned us about is that we've got to recover control of this country from the military, and we'd better do it pretty soon. This UFO censorship is only one facet of it, but it is a glaring example of how the military will shove its foot down your neck if it gets a chance. Now, if these things do present a danger, if they are a menace in any way, if they are as important as we have every reason to believe that they are on the basis of the official attention that they're receiving all over the world, then the American public has a right to know what is known about it. The Defense Department is nothing more than a bodyguard for the United States of America. And if you have hired a bodyguard who knows that you're in danger and won't tell you about it and won't permit anybody else to tell you about it, then it's time you got yourself a new bodyguard.